you're making a money decision. Pick a money decision that you've done recently. Are you with me? Do you got one in your mind? Now I want you to start to take a look at what's the energy behind that decision? What do I mean by energy? Was it somebody else coming to you and trying to provoke an answer for you? Or was it something that you came up with yourself that this is, this was you. It wasn't influenced by anybody else. Hey, what's going on everybody? Julie Murphy here, and I am going to help you look at what your financial container looks like. You may be like, Jewel, what in the heck are you talking about? First, can you do me a favor? Can you hit that subscribe, like, and notification bell? Why? Because I'm going to get you to a life that you absolutely love. Are you ready for that? Because I know I am. Who's tired of all the struggle and strife and, you know, and scarcity? Just lots of scarcity going on in the world right now. So we need to look at our own containers. Are you ready? All right, so I'm going to help you get... I want you to look at your financial container in three different ways, all right? Um, and I talk about this in my book, um, The Emotion Behind Money. Um, and I always point to my subtitle here. Why? Because I really want this to hit home with people. It's about building your wealth from the inside out. Okay. What do you mean by that, Jewel? Well, building your wealth from the inside out is about the fact that you have to take your heart along for the ride. And people are like, Jewel, what are you talking about? Like, is it the smart financial decision? Well, tell me which one's going to give me the nice rate of return. And well, tell me what do I need to cut out of my budget? So blah, 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 blah. Well, thank you for being in your left brain. And that's okay. But there's a big reason why at my wealth management firm, JMC Wealth Management here in Chicago, when we work with our clients, we talk about that we have to take your right and your left brain along for the ride. Because the right brain taps into that creative, the innovative, also taps into those emotions. Hence, the book, The Emotion Behind Money. And I have a book and a workbook, a course you could take online. Um, just go to juliemurphy.com if you need some of those resources. Because I've realized through the years, as I've been working with clients, that most of us, have maybe we had the right intentions and we started with something in our lives that excited us and we brought you know it's like when you're in your 20s you're getting your first job and you're like woohoo life is rocking and rolling and then you watch people they go through the 30s and then they start like oh life's a little bit more short. and it's like they shrink and they shrink and they contract and then it's like I hate my job I hate my commute I hate uh, uh, uh. and then you go to retire and then it's not really your golden years that you thought it would be. I see this all the time. In my book, The Emotion Behind Money, I talk about how when I'm driving down the street in Chicago and I can see um, these people getting off the train and they look like they've been punched in the face a hundred times. You're feeling tired, worn out. I think that's why so many people were like, oh my God, this feels so good working at home from the pandemic. That's why corporations are not sending everybody back to the office, right? That we are choosing different ways to plug into the world because we're exhausted. And we're exhausted because we've been doing things for the almighty paycheck and not for what's going to help us to expand and grow in what makes us feel amazing. So... Let's take a look at these three containers that I'm talking about going, what does your financial container talk about? So if you could do me a favor, I want you to close your eyes, okay? I'm gonna do this with you. I just want you to close your eyes. And I want you to start to visualize you're making a money decision. Pick a money decision that you've done recently. Are you with me? Do you got one in your mind? 
Now I want you to start to take a look at what's the energy behind that decision? What do I mean by energy? Was it somebody else coming to you and trying to provoke an answer for you? Or was it something that you came up with yourself that this is, this was you, it wasn't influenced by anybody else. You got it? Can you see it? So is the energy behind it, is it your energy? Or is it somebody else's energy behind it? Or is it a combo deal? Could be a combo deal. Absolutely. Now, I want you to look and observe that as you went through this financial decision and you're observing it and you're going, did you make this decision from anxiety, from being pressured by somebody else, or did you put the pressure on yourself for somebody else and they weren't really doing it, it was you that was doing it. A lot of parents do that for their children. And as you're observing this, what's going on in your body? Are you feeling anxiety? Are you starting to sweat? Is your heart rate starting to go higher? Do you feel sad? Or are you off the charts giddy? Are you giggling? You're like, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. That's so awesome. Which way is it? What's the energy? All right, open your eyes. Why did I walk you through that? Because I want you to start to become the observer of how you make financial decisions. Because emotionally, when we've had this rejection or trauma before we're seven years old, and even if you don't remember it, every human being's had one, because this is how our brains work, it hardwires you to respond to the world in a certain way. And this is all based on, you know, take a look at it. If you want to see the research on it, it's Dr. Bruce Lipton. Because Dr. Bruce Lipton... He's a biologist and he's proven that 97% of our response to the external world actually has to do with this trauma rejection. So when we can start to take a step back, that's why I had you close your eyes as well, because then you've kind of backed off the throttle a little bit and you've calmed your nervous system and your breath can help you a ton if you want to look and observe more of your patterning. Because I've noticed that when we look at your financial container, you're going to do one of three things. And this is what I was talking about at the beginning. So when you were looking at yourself, were you absorbing somebody else's desire? So were you people pleasing? Were you trying to fix it for somebody else? So if you had that it was somebody else's energy behind your money decision, you're absorbing somebody else's stuff. So you are taking on something that you don't have to take on. And this is where many of us do not hold boundaries, right? So one of the best ways that you can love a person is to hold that financial boundary with them, whether it's your kids your spouse, we have to realize when we absorb other people's financial energy, we are actually not coming from our own personal place of empowerment and we are training them how to treat us. So you are, you want to think it's the whole other person and it is not. You are actually just patching it and thinking it's going to be okay, but the beast is going to grow bigger. So watch your financial container. If you're absorbing other people's stuff, you need to start then coming from a place of 
tuning into what's true for you. That's the first thing. Then hold healthy boundaries to create action that supports the life you want to live. Now, the second type of container, it could be the fact that you might be the projector. You're the opposite side of it, right? (laughs) You're not the one absorbing it. You're the one that's projecting it, right? That's the second type of financial container. So what was going on when you were, when you had your eyes closed and you were seeing your financial energy? What was going on there? I want you to tap into what's that financial projection all about? What I find when people project, they're not feeling their feelings. Remember that trauma rejection before you're seven years old that Dr. Bruce Lipton talks about in the biology of belief? You're avoiding feelings. And again, remember, we work things out and we act it out and we do it through our money, through our health, our relationships. So if you are projecting, so if the words are coming out of you, if you watched yourself when you observed yourself, like, like it's this person's fault, or you exploded or you had anger or whatever, Anger is just deep sadness. So what are you sad about? I had the opportunity this week, which was amazing, to actually feel some feelings of the five-year-old version of myself that was really scared in an incident I had when I was a child. Because I, what does Julie do? Julie chalks it up. She moves on. She survives. She made it. You know, I feel like that woman in that picture, you know, the, from the fifties, you know, this, that she works now. Woo. And, um, but when you have that anger and that sadness, unless we feel those feelings, we are projecting. If you have fear, you are projecting. Just look outside these days. There's so much emotional projection going on. It's just because people are not feeling their feelings. The only way through this is to feel. You're not going to get there any other way. The only way is to bring up and out the stuff that's going on in the inside. Hence, building your wealth from the inside out. And if you don't feel those feelings, you're never going to get to the other side. You got to feel them. So if you observed yourself being that projector, this is about see where you're overriding boundaries on other people. Are you pushing yourself like over the edge onto other people and making it their issue, their problem, and you're watching them absorb your shit. Which side of the fence are you on? Are are you the one absorbing it, people-pleasing, fixing it? Or are you the projector that you want somebody else to absorb it and fix it because you don't want to stand in your own power and your own energy? So the third financial container was maybe you were the person that you could really observe and you were in your own power and your own energy and you could watch the people coming at you projecting and you could watch the other people who are absorbing, but you're now in neutrality because you have no internal trigger. If you're internally triggering, ask yourself, what am I not feeling? Right? So the next time you make a financial decision and you're going to step into this, And you want to dig deeper in terms of what is your emotion behind money and where are you acting it out or working it out? Take a look and say, am I absorbing? Am I projecting? Or am I finally in a state of neutrality? Because in the state of neutrality is where you maximize the law of attraction. You can't get there any other way. If you're absorbing other people's stuff or you're the projector, you will not attract and manifest what your heart desires in this lifetime. It's absolutely impossible. You can get pieces of it, but you're not going to get the whole kahuna. So if you're wondering why things fiscally are not working out the way that you want them to, it's because you're either absorbing or projecting. So take a look. And you might be doing a combo deal. It might depend on the decision. So I am here to help you guys, so please hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell, and I am going to get you to a life that you absolutely love. Thanks, everybody. See you soon. Bye.